The house I moved into has these ceiling fan and light combo units that are remote controlled. Since we're setting up our own smart home system, I want it to control these fans and lights as well. So I'm going to figure out what frequency the remote speaks on, decode the messages, and then use a Raspberry Pi to broadcast the same signals. Doing all of this doesn't require any expensive equipment. In fact, not counting the computer and Raspberry Pi, the total cost of the gear is about $30. The key to understanding the signal that the remote sends is this USB dongle. It's a USB TV tuner that was designed to let you watch TV and listen to FM radio, but people found out that the Realtek chip inside lets you receive raw data from anywhere in its frequency range. And the frequency range is huge. Most of these Realtek TV tuners can receive signals ranging from double digit megahertz up to two gigahertz, which will catch FM radio, TV, amateur radio, automobile, key fobs, cell phone signals, and tons more stuff. However, you can only tune one frequency at a time, so we're going to use a piece of free software called Spectrum. Spectrum lets us set a range, and it continuously jumps through the range in a loop. I just need to plug in my TV tuner, fire up Spectrum, and choose my device. The bigger the range, the slower it takes to scan through it, so I'm going to make an educated guess. It's not going to be low enough to be in the FM radio band, but probably not high enough to share the cell phone bands. I know that garage doors and car keys work on 300 to 400-ish megahertz, so this is probably also in that neighborhood. I'll set a scan range of 200 to 600 megahertz. To make it easier to find, I'll turn on the max line, which is like a high watermark. I should see a spike appear whenever I push the buttons on the remote. Okay, there it is. And I'm going to narrow down the range and see what frequency it's at. It's looking like 304.2 megahertz. Cool, so now I know what frequency it's speaking on. Next, I need to decode it. I'm going to use a second program called Universal Radio Hacker. This is a super convenient toolkit for decoding binary data from RF. Here, I'm choosing my receiver and setting the frequency. What I'm going to do is record just a couple seconds of signal, and in the middle of the recording, I'm going to push the remote button. The shorter the recording, the easier it is to handle. Okay, I've got my recording, and you can see that the signal in the middle is much stronger than the noise before and after. In fact, the signal was clear enough that Universal Radio Hacker has automatically decoded the data without me having to mess with anything. This remote is simply sending signals for the ones and quiet for the zeros, aka on-off keying. Now I just need to figure out the message. I kind of see a pattern here, which is that every third bit is a one, and that one is always followed by a zero. It's only the third bit in each triplet that changes. I'm guessing this made it easier for them to design the receiver because the receiver just needs to listen for an on to off transition to know that there's a bit of data coming. First, I'll set the message length divisor to three so that URH doesn't lose the zeros at the end of the message. Now I have the super clean data where each line is 39 bits. Over in the Analysis tab, I'm going to create a new decoding. I know that I can throw away the carrier bits, which are the 1, 0 that begin each triplet. Digital signals often encode data using different patterns, so the decoding tools let us see through the encoding to the actual data. You can see how this leaves only the actual bits that change. 
It's pretty obvious that this remote sends the same 13-bit message over and over again as you hold down the button. Next, I'm going to repeat the same process, but this time recording every different button on the remote. Again, set the divisor to 3 bits and apply the decoding we just made. Okay, this is kind of interesting. The first 8 bits are always the same, and inside each remote are 8 little switches that need to be set to match the ceiling fan. In fact, this remote has only the second switch flipped. These 8 bits must be controlled by those switches. It's how you can have multiple ceiling fans and still be able to talk to individual units. The last five bits must be the command because they're different for each button that I pressed. I can also annotate that in URH if I want to. With this recording, I can write out the binary commands for all seven of these buttons. At this point, I figured out the frequency the encoding scheme, and the actual binary commands for my ceiling and fan remote. The total cost so far is just $15 for the TV tuner. All I need to do next is get my Raspberry Pi to transmit the same command so I can control as part of my smart home. And that's coming in part two of this video. If you want to be notified when I upload videos, just subscribe and turn on notifications. And as always, all of your likes and comments are appreciated. Thanks for watching.